Toby, thanks for inviting me into your property over here. You brought here. a lot of Thank cameras you. with you. Well, you're an important guy. Well. You know, a big star like you, you need a lot of lenses. <laughs> I, I just got a question, Toby. So the, my experience with you sitting around is like you're a friggin' jukebox. I've never heard a guy know so many songs. Where's that come from? I mean, you got a good memory, or are you just a musicologist? Both. I think the uh, I think just loving music so much as a kid, listening to everything. Uh, my first group of music albums that I had, when I looked back on them and started seeing what all I'd collected, it was mostly songwriters. So I would listen to any kind of music as long as the person that was singing had written their own stuff. That's what I wanted to be was a songwriter. And so the song was always that important to me. And I guess it's just with a, with a you know, God bless me with a good memory and I just retained all of it. Even, even we drink, Toby, we drink. And my memory's shrinking, but that's another story. <laughs> so is my body. Ah! No. <laughs> when you were in high school, what, what was your go-to music? I uh, haggard. Anything from Haggard to Bob Seger. Really? And in high school, you were listening yeah. to country? I listened to Al Green. Oh, wow. I listened to, uh, I mean, obviously all the country stuff, but it was Willie Whalen, Hag, Charlie Daniels, the people who wrote their stuff. And then uh, then I, would, I loved, like, the Bob Seger stuff. I like John Prine. I like Al Green. Uh, as far yeah, as the R and B don't, stuff, it that's you why. don't have to write their own stuff R and B. I'll listen to anybody's R and B stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so what made you decide to go country? I mean, when you most young kids want to be rock stars, you want to be. But I mean, nowadays country are rock stars. But when you were doing it, it wasn't as fashionable as it is today, right? Right. Uh, just that was the most comfortable where I wrote, where my wheelhouse was writing. Yeah. That's where I fit. And when I sing, that's what I sound like. Now, I mean, you mean get up and jam anything we want to do, and I know, we I'm... make it sound like that, but it was like the stuff I wrote was more like American country, and that's where it fit. What do you think is the best song you ever wrote in your heart? The most important song I wrote should have been a cowboy, just because it separated me from the nobodies to a somebody. I come through the, broke through the critical mass and had a number one hit first out of the box. Well, then that allowed me some time for other people to research and find my music. Whereas there's so many talented guys and girls and acts that come in and they got an album and it never gets heard and they don't get a second chance or they do get a second chance that don't work. You gotta bust through and have one that makes you, put you on the board. Yeah. And that no, song do. was the most important one. I don't know, the best song uh, that I think I ever wrote uh, could be, um, uh, See? See? Yeah, it's hard. It is hard. It is. Every time somebody asks me, I got a name four or five, and then I say, well, or maybe, and then pretty soon you just say, just forget it, never mind. You yeah. Know, they're, they're, but I, hope, I'm just hope on the rocks would be up there. So within driving distance of your little mini city that you yeah. have here, um, what else you got around here? It's, I got one of the coolest old roadhouse venues in America. What's it called? Hollywood Corner. Why would you call it Hollywood? I didn't. They named it that a hundred years oh, ago. Oh, so you just didn't want to. How weird is it that they named it that a hundred years ago? <laughs> hundred years. Was Hollywood even open? <laughs> Were they even doing movies a hundred years ago? I don't think so, but there you go. Let's go see it. You okay, see bro. It? Yeah. yeah? We're going to drive. You got a little car collection. Yeah, we'll get something. We'll get an old beater and go yeah, over yeah. there. We want to go vintage. Yeah, yeah. For this place, yeah. you got to pull up in vintage, right? Yeah. Boom. Oh, yeah. We're about to head to Toby's Restaurant Hollywood Corners, but first, we gotta pick a car from Toby's Garage because we like to ride in style. Okay, this one's too new, right, Toby? That's for yeah. me. I mean, you know, we don't want no brand nah. new car. We're going to a no. diner, some 100-year-old no, no. diner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This would work. Now, your car that you got me is getting a motor put in it. It goes right the, here? Yeah, I'm changing the motor 63 right 63 Chevy Impala. 63 Chevy Impala. It spots here, so this is where your little horse stays. This is this mine and yours both. We love, I love this, this ride. car. I love that car. It's a right 69 there. 428 Cobra Jet Mach 1 Mustang. It's my Rubber favorite. Rubber burn car. mother. Love it. Boom. Crazy fast, 211, 212 miles an hour. We don't want to take horse. That. Can't get a camera in the car. Well, though. and then you and me get in there, we can't get out. <laughs> <laughs> this has got diner written all the fuck over it. This is us right here. Boom. This ain't a 442. This no. is just a straight it's up a cutlass. old 73 Cutlass ragtop. You think this is going to start, Toby? Boom, look at that. Woo, bam. 
No, it's got a little inch of pipe. I got two barrel carburetor. Right I think it's two barrel. Beautiful piece of property. How long did it take to get this all cleaned up? My dad worked on it for about three years with a bulldozer, two bulldozers, and wow. just kept grooming on it. So yeah. you took your time. I mean, you yeah, could we took went crazy. And yeah. You know, I like it. This kind of gate Elvis would have. Wow. But this sure is beautiful out here, man. People yeah. that don't look like this, man, they can go to the city. Go back. Go home. It's yeah, just far enough out where nobody can mess with you. All right. Yeah. It's closed here, but I'm going to show you these cool old pumps. I'm glad it's closed, Toby. Otherwise, you and I would be taking pictures and signing autographs all day, especially <laughs> you in your hometown. Here we go. So you own this thing. Yeah. Wow. This is cool. Welcome to Hollywood Corners. If Toby has one more business, I'm telling you, I'm going to stop him. I'm going to put him in rehab. Say, you, you, you got, you stop it. <laughs> So this is Highway 77 north and south, and people would stop here, and this gas station almost 100 years old. So I kept the two pumps. I really didn't want to get in the gas business. I really just want to sell a little food and beer, have my little band out back. People come here and sit on bike night, or and they bring high-performance cars. I have 100 octane gas. Wow, awesome. You can't yep. get that in California. You can't? No, this well, racetrack's got it. Well, California but, sucks then. Well, I wouldn't say that. Then hold on. <laughs> Shit, I gotta change my hat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do we got in here, Toby? So this was the original. And think about this. They called this Hollywood Corner in the middle of nowhere, Oklahoma. In 1925. <laughs> and look at these cats. I don't quite get look, that. It says Hollywood oh, Corner. is a real deal. Sinclair oh. gas station. They had Budweiser here, something selling for a nickel. And you got a roll up door here. It's an old garage yeah. door. A door open and it spills out on the patio. Won't we'll go out on the patio? Oh, hell yeah. All right. Plenty of area for everybody to sit. At night, we turn these lights on. Got a little shade tree, and it just turns it into like an outdoor redneck event. That's awesome, man. Oh, this is the flatbed truck. Get out of here. This is a flatbed trailer for a stage. Oh. And we built a drum riser behind it. And the people come stand right here and drink beer. Hey, you guys stand right here. Here, you guys stand right here. I got something for you. This is gonna be great, by the way. We got winners. <laughs> we got losers. <laughs> Chain smokers and boozers. Your redheads would be right there here, man. Is, man. Woo, yeah, I play up here in a heartbeat, man. It's a cool little venue, man. You know, Toby, all this standing on a stage and stuff makes me feel like playing. We got two choices. We go back in the house, get the stuff, bring it back here and do it. But once we get to your house and start drinking, we probably ain't gonna. No, we play, we're going to play there. But... We just sit around, pick a yeah. drink a little bit. So I want to hear your new song. I want to sure. hear that pirate song. Sure. I call it pirate. What's the name of that song? Rum is the reason. Yeah, rum is the reason. Yeah, I'll drink to that. Woo, we'll be right back. <laughs> Stick around, because Toby and I will be grabbing our guitars for a little acoustic jam. I'm at Toby's Ranch, and it's time now for an acoustic jam with the big dog daddy. Hey, welcome back to uh, Sammy's Rock and Roll Road Trip and uh, with my dear friend, Mr. Toby Keith. And we've been talking a bunch of smack about things. And, you know, it's like, what we, what do we really do? This is what we really do. Big. I've sat around and noodled with you. Every time you write a new song to me, it's just like, you've always got that one. We had this idea, you know, pirates used to rule the world. And they were owning it back in the day. Whatever happened to the pirates? Well, they don't know real estate. I think rum is the reason pirates never ruled the world. So <laughs> I was like, I, I, I got this covered. So I started thinking around the whole world what, what was the other drinks that probably took empires down? There's a couple more of them. I bet David Crockett had a pint in his pocket, good whiskey at the Alamo. I know Pancho Villa. Had a jug of tequila when he walked the streets of old Mexico. While Blackbeard was freezing around a hurricane season, he didn't quit because of a girl. Sammy Rum is the reason the pirates never ruled the world. Yeah, there's some more. There's some more. So while Russia was brawling, 
I bet that old Stalin was calling for a vodka martini. While the world laid in fear, man, old Hitler drank beer from a stein, eating sauerkraut and weenies. <laughs> Yeah, down through the ages, as they turned through the pages, they couldn't drink their diamonds and pearls. Sing it. Rum is the reason the pirates never ruled the world. There you go. <laughs> I ain't getting much done, but I'm having fun sailing on the deep blue sea, like down in Cabo. My whole body goes numb from a bottle of dark rum and the sun sinking down on me. Yeah, my catch of the day is a tall Cobra Libra. Chase it down with 12 ounce curl. You know, rum is a reason, I guess. <laughs> rum is a reason, I guess. Yeah, rum is a reason that pirates never rule the world. You better believe it. <laughs> I'll drink to that. Oh, that is so awesome. Weenies, you got weenies in there? Yeah, weenies. I got Hitler drinking beer. I got Stalin on a vodka Ooh. martini. Toby, I sincerely want to thank yeah. you for inviting me, your hospitality, you and your family and your wife. You know, our kids get along. Yeah. You and I get along. Yeah. Our wives get along. Yeah. To hell. Everybody else should get along. That's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> we can do it. The whole world can do it. Yeah, that's Thank right. you. Thanks, brother. Toby and I like to finish our day off with a little drink. So let's do a toast to my big buddy, Mr. Toby Keith. Whew. Now, Toby, you still got the worm in here, right? Yeah, I still got the worm in here. You know, there's a reason for that. A lot of people say, oh, hey, the worms, it's a, whoa, whoa, well, you know, the worms, that's it. it, it got, Mescal, the plant's got worms in it. Yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm a damn agave expert, man. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, having that worm in there is cool. That's tight, man. That's old man. school. That's the, yeah. uh, well, when I first started having this made in Mexico, when I first started drinking it with the locals down there, of course, being down there as many years as we have, you get to know the locals, and they yeah. said, we drink this stuff. And I said, well, I thought you drank drink tequila. They said, no, we sell that shit to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, though. You can't make much it's, mezcal. Like, it's a it's a artisanal product. Yeah, because it's a Mexican moonshine. Here's what I'm doing. I got this drink I invented called a 5150. Yeah. It's 50% white, okay. over ice, you know? Right. And then you then you put 51% red. Or, or you can move it around. And, you know, 5150, that's a uh, police code for the criminally insane. So, it fit, that's a 5150, and okay. basically say, what's in it? Rum. <laughs> but uh, now, and so, so, so you, you so would mine, say. The way I like to drink mezcal is I put this whole bottle in the freezer. It thickens up, doesn't freeze, but it, you can tell it gets a little thick. It's uh -huh. really, really ice cold, but it won't freeze. And I like to pour it in a cup, but being as warm Same spot thing, today, though. I how like do you like your mezcal? Straight. Straight. But I got, ice, I, got, I got ice in there, yeah, so I'm going to chill it so down a little bit. Now, I'm going to drink yours, you're going to drink mine. Yeah. And, and the guy that makes the worst face. <laughs> Toby, Here's a good cheers, friend. man. Here's to cheers a fun to day, man. Yeah, this buddy. is like, if I can make a living this way, oh, I guess I can. You do already. Oh, that's smooth as silk, man. You leave that nice smoke. I've never had red. Yeah, it's macadamia nut. Got a little sweet edge to it. It's a lady's yeah. drink. Oh, shit. <laughs> Quit. Tastes like bacon. 